Good afternoon! Welcome back to another episode of Kids Corner Book Talks for Kids. So I, Sam, the children's librarian here at the Ukiah Branch Library, will be going through four books. There are a variety of books today. I have a chapter book. I have two fictional picture books. And we've got one nonfiction graphic novel to go through today. So I will be doing a short book talk about each of these four books that are new here in the Children's Library. Anytime you see one of these red stickers on the cover, that means that it has been published within the last six months, so it's still new. And these are all available for checkout here at the Ukiah Branch Library. So if you're interested in any of the ones I talk about today, stop on by during our open hours and we will set you up. So first we're going to talk about Girl Giant and the Jade War by Van Huang. Can you see that at all? I'm going to turn this light off. Maybe that'll make it a little bit easier to see. There we go. Girl Giant and the Jade War by Van Huang. We'll be talking about that one. We will also be talking about Nathan Hale's Hazardous Tales Cold War Correspondent by, you guessed it, Nathan Hale. Then we'll talk about I Sang You Down from the Stars. This is written by Tasha Spillett Sumner and illustrated by Michaela Goad. This one made me cry. It was so beautiful. And then we will be re or talking about Aaron Slater Illustrator, which is written by Andrea Beattie and illustrated by David Roberts. So let's get started with our first one. Let's talk about Girl Giant and the Jade War. So do you remember Tom? Right here, whoop, right here on the cover, Tom from Girl Giant and the Monkey King. She is a super strong 11 year old girl who moved to the southeastern United States from LA, very long move with her mom. And she only knew in her new town one other Asian American girl in her school who also happened to be super duper mean to her. She was a bully. And then Tom accidentally freed someone called the Monkey King and everything spiraled out of control after that. That was all from the first book. Well, we're going to buckle up because she's back again in the second book in this series. So Tom thought that the Monkey King was her friend. After all, he taught her how to control her super strength and he taught her how to stand up for herself against her bullies, especially that girl who bullied her on her soccer team. And then he proved that he wasn't her friend. He tricked her into stealing his magical club, also called a cudgel, from the heavens and using it to free him from the prison that the Buddha had sent him to 500 years ago. He's been in prison for 500 whole years. So now Tom knows that he's not really her friend. He was just using her. So the Monkey King, now freed from his prison of 500 years, is attempting to wage war against someone called the Jade Emperor, who is the ruler of the heavens in Vietnamese mythology. So Tom, right here, and her dragon friend Ka are going to go on an adventure to try to uh, gather more allies, which includes Consal right here, who is one of the Monkey King's fox demon friends, to do everything they can to stop him from waging war against the heavens. So this is a fantasy adventure chapter book that is 313 pages, including the acknowledgments. And as we discussed before, it's the first book in the Girl Giant series. And it centers around a young Vietnamese American girl named Tom and her sudden introduction to the mystical, magical beings that she had previously thought were just Vietnamese mythology. Turns out they're real. So this is a super fun fantasy adventure uh, series that deals with the complexity of friendship, deals with betrayal, it deals with found family, which really gets me right in the heart. And it even has a little bit of what it can feel like to suddenly have two parents when all your life it's just been you and your mom and how that can kind of mess with your head a little bit and how that difference affects you. So I think that this book is a really amazing. It fits into a lot of different emotional times in a teenager's life. Uh, I recommend it for ages 10 and up. It's about a fifth grade reading level and it also includes some awesome black and white illustrations illustrations to help you really visualize what the characters look like sprinkled throughout the book. So here's, here is one of the Monkey King's monkey demon friends. Here is Tom. Here's Kansal right here. And this is Ka. Whoop, 
Ka, her dragon friend, that are helping her in her battle against the Monkey King. So that is Girl Giant and the Jade War by Van Huang, and it is available for checkout. So next up, we are going to talk about one of our picture books for today. This one, the one that made me cry, is I Sang You Down From the Stars by Tasha Spillett Sumner, and it's illustrated by Michelle or Michaela Goad. So as she, she being mom right here, waits for the arrival of her new baby, a mother-to-be gathers all of the gifts that she's going to need to create what we are calling, or what is called a sacred welcoming medicine bundle for her baby. And this sacred welcoming medicine bundle includes a white feather and cedar and sage, which are herbs and plants that you can gather outside, and a stone, a special stone from a river. A river. <laughs> and with each addition to the sacred bundle, so I will show you. Right here, she's gonna be gathering her feather on the first page. So she finds the feather right here on the first page in her hands. And then she's going to find the cedar and the sage. Here we see her smelling them. And now she's put them in a beautiful shell for safekeeping. And then she's gonna find her river stone. Down here, she's found a river stone. And here she's thinking and sitting and loving her baby still in her belly while she's holding that river stone and imbuing it with all kinds of love. So once she has found all of these additions to her sacred bundle, she's offering her coming baby the strength and a long-lasting, enduring connection to tradition and to family and to her indigenous community. And as they grow together, both mommy and baby are gonna find that they have gifts to offer to each other. Just as mom has created the medicine bundle for her newborn to help the baby grow and connect with her ind indigenous identity, the growing child is gonna offer mom love and understanding and even the ability to carry on indigenous traditions into the next generation. So, and spun throughout this, which I think is a really beautiful touch is the traditional understanding of many indigenous communities that babies actually choose which parents they're going to have while they're still up in the stars. And I think that's really beautiful. You can kind of see that with the sprinkling star motif that starts in the very beginning before she's even pregnant. It says right here, I loved you before I met you, before I held you in my arms, I sang you down from the stars and the baby's choosing this mom in particular to be her mom. So this is 24 pages of absolutely gorgeous hand-painted illustrations. Almost every page, like the one I just showed you, features swirling stars and clouds, which is another really cool touch. That is actually a motif honoring the author's in Ninuak heritage, uh, where they identify as the people of the stars. So I think that that's a really nice touch that the illustrator included. So thank you for doing that, Michaela Goad. Uh, I think that um, the end page of this book is particularly poignant. It ends with a whispered prayer. As I held you close, I whispered in your ear, I loved you before I met you. Before I held you in my arms, I sang you down from the stars. And I just think that's so beautiful. Uh, it's hard to come say it without crying. So anyway, I recommend this for story time celebrating Mother's Day or for any units in school focusing on North American indigenous cultures because both the author and the illustrator are actually uh, indigenous to uh, North America up in Canada, not the United States. Um, so any North American indigenous unit or you can use it as a jumping point to learn about indigenous cultures here in the United States as well. Um, I also think it would be really good for learning, learning about world cultures and heritage as well. Uh, and I think this makes an excellent jumping off point for further discussion about how various cultures around the world celebrate the birth of a newborn, for example, or maybe what cultures around the world do to prepare for a new baby in the home and in the community, because that's different depending on where you live for a lot of different people. So again, that is I Sang You Down From the Stars, written by Tasha Spillett Sumner and illustrated by Michaela Goad. All right, so the next one we're gonna talk about is Nathan Hale's Hazardous Tales, Cold War Correspondent by Nathan Hale. This is a nonfiction graphic novel, and it is about how when war was declared in 1950, uh, when the uh, North Korean army 
passed over borders into South Korea with tanks that they got from the then Soviet Union. And then when Seoul was captured, the New York Herald Tribune reporter right here, Marguerite Higgins, was there. And she fled with refugees who were heading south after Seoul was captured. Unfortunately, she was trapped when the bridges going over the Han River, so going south from Seoul, were destroyed. And then this brave woman, Marguerite Higgins, who was a reporter for the New York Herald Tribune, uh, this brave woman continued to report on everything that she witnessed during the invasion and into active war. So she risked her life over and over and over again to make sure that people around the world knew what it was like to be in a war and what the cost of active war is for civilians especially. So even when she was ordered to leave because she was a woman and her boss thought that it wasn't safe for her uh, because that's something that people still do unfortunately, she refused to let anything stop her from abandoning her post and she stayed and she reported and she's a hero. So this again is a nonfiction graphic novel that is 127 pages of black and white illustrations. Sometimes they're funny, a lot of the time they're kind of thrilling and occasionally they even get a little bit scary and maybe a little bit gory. So for that reason, I recommend this for uh, ages 10 and up, uh, fifth grade and up reading level. Additionally, the spreads are pretty dense. There are quite a few panels per page and there's a lot of text per page and some of them are even more than that one. Let me go to one that has even more. There's one that's got like 14 panels per page. So they, they're they pretty dense and there are quite a few words of three, even four syllables. So anyone that's younger than fifth grade reading level or younger than 10 years old, if they are above fifth grade reading level at that point, um, might need a lot of extra assistance getting through those extra hard words, those, those uh, gold star words is what I like to say. So for the gold star words, I think that that is a good reason to keep it at a higher reading level. And also the content, like I said, gets a little bit scary, even a little bit gory occasionally. Um, so that being said, uh, there are quite a few depictions of active war. I'm going to repeat that phrase again, that without getting too bloody, they don't shy away from making it clear that death and destruction is involved in active war. Um, we don't want to lie to kids about that. We want to be honest about it, but it does get a little gory, gory, so maybe don't let the very young kids take a look at this without uh, supervision or without, you know, an adult being nearby to answer questions if they have any, because we all know they've got lots of questions, right? So this is one in a series of nonfiction graphic novels all by Nathan Hale uh, about various points in American history or in the history of the world that America has been involved in. Uh, they are called Nathan Hale's Hazardous Tales, and then each one is about a specific event. So this one's about Cold War correspondent Marguerite Higgins. There's one about the Donner Party. There are a couple about various events in World War I. There are a couple about the Underground Railroad, etc., etc. We have most of them, so if you want to check any of them out, please feel free. But this one is Cold War Correspondent. All right, our last book, and this is a very sweet one, is called Aaron Slater, Illustrator. Here's the cover. So the protagonist of this picture book, Aaron Slater right here, loves listening to stories out in the garden, especially when he's out among the flowers more than anything else in the world. That's what he loves to do. Every day during the summer, he sits outside and he draws and illustrates while he listens to the stories that his family is are telling. And one day he dreams of being a writer all on his own. Like that's what he wants to do when he grows up. But, and this is a big but. <laughs> it's a big but. But Aaron has a doll. Oh, here he is reading with his family, listening to stories. He loves listening to stories, but here's the big but. <laughs> Words look like gibberish to him. Can you see that writing right there? We can see that it's backwards, but even to Aaron, this just looks like scribbles on a page. He is having a very, very hard time learning how to read. Uh, when it becomes clear to him that the other kids in the class are learning and he's still having a hard time, he becomes so discouraged that he can't even write a single word down on the page. Even when his teacher asks him to write his own story and present it in front of the class, he just can't do it. 
not just because he's nervous, but because the letters just look so weird. When people talk to him, he can understand it and he hears it and he absolutely understands it just fine. And he can tell his own stories just fine too. But when it comes to looking at the words on the page, man, they just look like scribbles. And when he writes, it just looks like scribbles too. So what happens is he wonders how he can be a storyteller, how he can be a writer if he can't read or write on his own. But one day something magical happens and he finds out how to tell a story in his own special way. I'm not going to spoil it for you. And suddenly the world of storytelling is wide open for Aaron Slater and he can be a storyteller all he wants. So this is a very colorful picture book. Uh, 37 pages, including an author's note, uh, that is all about Aaron Slater, who is based on a real person. So Aaron Douglas was an African-American artist who lived from 1899 to 1979 and who happened to be dyslexic. And just like Aaron Slater, uh, a special thing to note, which I think is really cool, is that the text used throughout this book if you can see it, it's a little bit different than maybe what you're used to seeing in picture books, is actually a special typeface called dyslexia, which was created to be easier for people with dyslexia to read. So I would recommend this for third grade reading level and up, so about seven or eight and up. There's quite a bit of text on each page. I will open it to, so you'll see there's a whole paragraph of text pretty much on each page, so it is pretty dense. And there are some words of up to three syllables. So you want them to be, the, the reader, to be able to get through words of, of at least three syllables or to be able to figure out how to pronounce words from context and stuff like that. So about third grade reading level and up. Um, the rhyming text, however, it is really nice rhyming text and colorful illustrations are gonna help keep attention for the slightly younger crowd. So if you do wanna do this as a read aloud, I think it would work for down to second or first grade even, um, as long as you um, you know make sure to include the children in the storytelling frequently, ask lots of questions, get their opinions, point out special features in the book, stuff like that. But if you're wanting to have someone read it alone or read it on their own for solo reading time, I think it would probably be third grade and up is best. Um, this is great for any unit in school or any story time about artists or art or about dyslexia and other learning abilities or about creative writing and storytelling. So again, that was Aaron Slater Illustrator written by Andrea Beatty and illustrated by David Roberts. So one more time we learned about Girl Giant and the Jade War by Van Wong. We learned about I Sang You, whoop, if I stop throwing things. I Sang You Down from the Stars by Tasha Spillett Sumner, illustrated by Michaela Goad. We learned about Nathan Hale's Hazardous Tales Cold War Correspondent, written and illustrated by Nathan Hale. And we learned about Aaron Slater, illustrator by Andrea Beatty, illustrated by David Roberts. So these are all available for checkout currently at the Akaya Branch Library. Stop by during our open hours to pick one up, or you can give us a call to request one and we'll put it on hold for you. Or you can request it online at mendolibrary.org. You just make sure you have your library card number and your PIN number handy so that you can log in and request. Aside from that, I will be doing story time in the park tomorrow morning from 10.30 to 11. Uh, we will, of course, be having a bubble playtime afterwards that usually stops at about 11.15. And then families meander over to the park and play in the park for a while. So that's at Todd Grove Park under the gazebo from 10.30 to 11. And other than that, I will see you next month on the last Friday of April for our next Kids Corner. Have a fabulous weekend and bye.